Diabetes mellitus type 2 is among the so-called lifestyle diseases. According to the World Health Organization, WHO, 347 million people worldwide are living with diabetes. 90% of them have type 2 diabetes. One of the main causes of this disease is obesity. The City Hospital of Munich now uses a method that is able to treat severe obesity as well as type 2 diabetes. The endobarrier therapy is an endoscopic alternative to divert stomach contents into deep small intestine sections. Normally, this involves major surgery, which is not easily reversible. The endobarrier endoscopic approach can be reversed at any time. You also don't need surgery, but just a gastroscopy. During a gastroscopy, a very thin plastic sheath is positioned in the lower end of the stomach, called the pylorus, and then rolled out approximately 60 centimeters into the upper small intestine. Stomach contents then go out through the pylorus and into the plastic sheath, so that the first 60 centimeters of the small intestine are not touched by the stomach content. This is important because hormone-producing cells in the mucous membrane at the upper part of the small intestine are not being activated by any substances this way. The result? A lower insulin dose, feeling less hungry, and reduced food intake by patients. In addition, the insulin which patients dispense from their pancreas becomes more effective. Overall, the diabetes treatment of insulin-dependent patients in particular becomes a lot easier because insulin requirements decrease. After 6 to 12 months, the endobarrier is removed again. Since the tube is retained with a nitinol anchor, it needs to be carefully pulled out. Nitinol is a metal. It could literally lacerate the esophageal wall if the anchor is removed carelessly with the endoscope. In order for this not to happen, you need to do the following. Once again, this is done within the scope of a gastroscopy. This time, however, by not using endotracheal intubation but sedation, you pull on a specific retention stitch which is hinged in the nitinol anchor and makes the nitinol anchor collapse. It can then be retracted into a cone guard with the endoscope and safely pulled out through the esophagus and the mouth. The endoscopic treatment method promises improvement without surgery and without changing the body. But what are the risks? Endobarrier therapy has essentially three typical risks. One is the risk of hemorrhage. The nitinol anchor is located in the pylorus. Patients experience chronic stimulation at this spot because a nitinol anchor is there for several months. The hemorrhage risk factor is therefore much greater. Such hemorrhages can be dangerous. Patients are not allowed to take any aspirin, anti-rheumatic drugs and no blood thinning drugs as long as they have the endobarrier to minimize the hemorrhaging risk. The second risk consists of the endobarrier tube-shaped liner leaving its designated location and moving down the small intestine. In extreme cases, this could lead to acute small bowel obstruction. In order for this not to happen, the nitinol anchor has to be precisely positioned in the pylorus. This way it safely retains the plastic tube and prevents migration. The third risk pertains to occlusion, meaning the endobarrier tube is blocked, for instance, with food particles. This is why we feed patients only fluids and mashed foods during the first week. Not until this works well can the diet be normalized. Endobarrier constitutes one part of the overall therapy concept for diabetologists. They consider this treatment method for several reasons, as Dr. Torsten Siegmund explains. The endobarrier therapy 
The endobarrier therapy is normally incorporated into a holistic therapy concept. Patients should be looked after by competent expert staff. This includes diabetologists, nutrition specialists and particularly also dietitians who are familiar with the concept and motivate patients. In a professional environment, the results can then be very positive. The endobarrier therapy often means a big adjustment in a patient's diet. It doesn't just promise drastic weight loss, but is also successful in type 2 diabetes treatment. This is a very effective therapy when it comes to blood sugar. Even though you reduce drugs, the metabolism and blood glucose level improve significantly. The HbA1c level, glycated hemoglobin, reflects the average blood glucose level. Here, we see improvements of 1 to 2, in rare cases also more than 2% HbA1c reduction. This is very effective, more effective than drug therapy, and similarly effective as insulin therapy. The beauty of this is that this metabolic optimization is consistent with a drug reduction, meaning it has very positive effects on the blood glucose level. It also has positive effects on body weight. A body weight reduction of about 20% in 12 months is possible. This is far more effective than a normal diet, even under professional supervision. But it's not as effective as metabolic surgery, that being bariatric or gastric bypass surgeries. These interventions provide even more weight loss for patients.